your difficulties, your diseases, your conflicts, all of that is preparing you as a voice of encouragement to others that are around you. Isn't it amazing how God will drop in your lap somebody that needs your word? Mm. Not one you got to make up, but you just go down the list of things you didn't gone through and how you reacted. Let me save you some trouble. Just listen to me for a minute. All you need to do is remember. No test, no temptation that comes your way, little paraphrase, is beyond anything that others haven't already gone through. I heard someone say it's normal for you to have some problems sometimes. All you need to remember is that God will not let you down. He'll never let you push past what you're able to handle. Sometimes you don't know what you can handle until you go through. Then you look back and you're proud of yourself. Woo, I did that. He's always there to help you come through. All you got to do is turn to him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for a word that touches that goes out and does not come back void. Believe it done in your son's name, Jesus. Strengthen the mind to remember who's in control of our blessings and our unfortunate incidents. Father, we know not what your plans are for us, but I'm grateful to know that you know, that you know right where we are, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
can't see him, he's working. Even when I can't feel him, he's working. Never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. Even when I can't see him, he's working. Even when I can't feel him, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. Even when I can't see him, he's working. Even when I can't feel him, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. Even when I can't see him. serve a God. You can be in a bottomless pit, but still he can find a way out of it. You can be under doctors that say they don't know what else to do, but yet he still works miracles. And if you read your Bibles, you know that people who have lied in their tombs for days on end, Jesus shows up and makes a way out of, you know, some of you have experienced it in your own life where you didn't know how it was going to work out, but then God show up. If he ain't showing up in your life, I'm going to testify for myself because he's shown up for me and mine. Because what my family was going through, when we was going through the heartaches, when we didn't know was we going to see the next day or not, when we didn't know what a dollar was going to meet each other, when we saw our God make a way. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Our God is able. Our God is able, magnificent, wonderful, the everlasting King of glory. And we give him thanks and honor and praise here today. Because he's all that and some. I want to give him thanks and honor for our pastor and Sister Cohen. Because that is a good gift to this church. And we tell God, thank you for good things. So we say thank God for them. For Reverend Knapp, who's already come and blessed us, and his wife. Thank you for that word. Well, my passing days, too, where my, sh- my Kool-Aid didn't have enough sugar in it either. So, yeah, so uh, I feel what you were saying. <laughs> For our other preach brethren, Reverend Barnes, his wife, so, who's off delivering the word this morning. We want to continue to pray for him in his absence. Amen. To each and every one of you who are gathered here with us today, it's good to see your face. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you woke up in the morning and looked in the mirror. Hopefully, no. When you looked at the mirror, you were looking at a miracle. You were looking at something that was fearfully and wonderfully made by the hands of God. So as I look at you, I know I'm not just looking at mere mortals, mere human beings, but I'm looking at God's special very good creation. And I praise God that you are here in attendance with us. And those who are, who are viewing via media land, God bless you as well for this youth choir. God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Got they, they tie-dye shirts on, multicolored, rainbow colors. The church kind of got scared of the rainbow colors there for a while. Because <laughs> the world tried to steal that from us. But before they tried to make it mean something else, no, God already had a meaning for the many colors of the rainbow. That's a different lesson for a different day. Amen. I want to take us to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, which I believe goes very fittingly with the song we just just sang. Book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19. Right after Ephesians, right there. Amen. Right after Ephesians, you'll find Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. If you hear Colossians, just turn back one book. Amen. Break it down, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And it reads as such. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his holy and righteous word. I want to talk just for a little bit of the supply chain of God. The supply chain of God. If you were like me and you watch at least a little bit of TV every now and then. Well, some shows like American Idol, which was showing this week, I just sat down and watched it just for a little bit, just to see if anything had changed. And I noticed that it was about the same. Every person that came on there had some story where they were neglected or where they were hurt or they lost their house in the fire or their mother had some terminal sickness. They all had some type of need that if they found their way to success through American Idol, American Idol would supply all their needs. But I know as I watch American Idol, literally thousands if not millions of people come through this show expecting that this one show will provide all their needs. And here's what happens usually every year. Every year it comes down to one man or woman who stands on the stage weeping tears because they've won American Idol only to be forgotten about in the next few months. And I often ask the question, did American Idol supply all their needs? 
I talk to people every now and then about why do they find themselves going to drugs and alcohol so often? Why do they find themselves drunken and how often? It's often to say, say we, well, we need a way just to escape from the pain and misery and the distractions that are going on around us. They say life is too painful. We just need something to numb the pain. They have a need in their life, and they go to this avenue to escape all of that. But yet they always find that the bottle goes empty. They always find that the blunt goes out. And they always find themselves in need once again. Now, saints, that is not to say that we do not have all spiritual, physical, and mental needs that need to be met. But might I suggest to you and offer up to you as another solution, rather than going to the money, rather than going to the systems of the world, rather than going just to the things and the material possessions of this world, might we turn to one who is more sovereign? Might we turn to one who might not only gets us out of situations, but is even over the situations? This is why I believe Paul is a good example, because Paul, is, he's locked up in prison and being beaten and ridiculed for proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ, he comes to a point where he is being provided to not by himself because the tent making only got him so far. He would talk about how other churches had to support him in his ministry and in his journey of proclaiming the gospel to others. And as Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, he pens these words. And he says to them, and my God shall supply. You see, that's what he first came to. He came back to not the circumstances of his need, not just the needs themselves, but the one who supplies in his need. He began to be more personal when he says, my God will supply. You know, sometimes we live in the land of negativity, you know, saying I'll never make it to this point in my life. I'll never get this raise in my job. I'll never be as good looking as Dr. Colin. I'll never be as rich as somebody else. I'll never have as much money. We always live in the land of negativity. But when it comes to the supply chain of God, we don't have to live in the land of negativity. But we can say with affirmative positivity, we can say that God will supply. You see, God is not a maybe God, but he's a God that will do according to his word. But what will he supply? Everything that you want? Because I've been waiting on my, my, my fancy car. I've been, I've been waiting on the millions. I've been waiting on my wife. I'm just, I'm just saying, what, Lord, what will you supply? And although the Lord has not supplied everything that I wanted, God has supplied everything that I needed. So, saints, what does that mean for us? It says, let the price of eggs go up as high as they need to. Let the price of gas go up as high as it needs to. Let the meat disappear off the aisles in this grocery store. Let the money disappear out of your bank accounts. But because I serve a God that says he will supply all of my needs, not according to what America has in its storehouses, not according to what can be traded and shipped across the sea, but according to his riches in glory. The land we look to for our riches is not here on earth. It's with God in glory. They talk about Neverland, where the problems of Neverland, where you never grow old. You don't have to worry about the problems of aging. Neverland is not what we look to. It ain't a kuna matata where it means no worries. We look to the land of glory for all of our needs to be supplied. That's where our storehouses is located at. But how is it going to come? 
but it's only going to come by Jesus Christ. For those of you in here that may not know this Jesus, if you look to see all your needs, supplies, and have this kind of hope, know that your needs can and will be supplied by God according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. We preach Christ and him crucified and raised three days later. This is how we find ourselves supplied for. So saints, when they ask you, how do you find yourself making it through life? Well, you tell them that my God has supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory according by Jesus Christ. And if that's your prayer, I pray it be mine. It'll be our encouragement throughout this week. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today that when we face need this week and we will face a need this week even right now some of us are sitting with needs right now I pray that you encourage us Father let us know that yes you are the way maker you are the one that will provide for us you are the one that supplies all of our needs according to your riches and glory Father we need you every single day of our life Bless us by the power of your hand. And in Jesus' name, I pray that you continue to supply for your people. And we'll continue to give you the praise and thanks and all the glory. We ask these things and all things in our darling son, in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Our responsive reading today was going to come from the book of Matthew, chapter 18. <clears throat> You'll find it printed in your bulletin. Matthew, chapter 18. Amen. And the reason it says, it says, And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of God. All, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Uh, I, I forget about a microphone. Again, we just thank God for all of you who are here today. Amen. We had a wonderful Sunday school. We had, a, uh, like I say, just this choir this morning. Worship is going real great. God is so good to us. Uh, thank God for covering up as much blue as you have covered today. Amen. I, I was looking and like we had to build a bigger choir stand. Amen. Keep growing like they're growing. Amen. Yeah. We, just, we, can, we can knock out a wall. We'll fix it up. Amen. Yes, it is. This is God's church. Amen. Uh, one one uh, announcement that, uh, you know, they were talking about is planning this trip for Branson, and if you're thinking about going, I want to go, they're going to meet today immediately following morning worship. Uh, so if you want to go, I plan on going, I want to get the more details, immediately following morning worship uh, this morning, they're going to meet uh, with that. Amen. All right, Sister Didi.
Amen. Sound doctrine. We still there. Today marks Sermon 10 on the subject of sound doctrine. Yes, sir. Now, I brought my notebook today. It's got all of them in it. If you miss one, made an airplane out of one. Wrote your grocery shopping list on one. Sister Lily, be glad to run you the one you missed. Because I want you to have all of these. Because I told you when we started this, I don't want to pass the ignorant folks. I want you to know what the Bible says. And so today, we're going to move into another subject. Our base scripture is Romans 3.23. Amen. You're going to see a lot of scriptures today. But it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're going to talk about sin today. Amen. Father, we come now thanking you for your blessing. We thank you that we are here to hear from heaven. Prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits to receive your word. That Father, we not only hear it, but we'll be doers also. Lord, just speak to us. Help us to grow in sound doctrine that we can be closer to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Power of your spirit, amen, and thank God. Transgressions, iniquity, trespasses, unrighteousness, cardinality, wayward, bad habits, stiff neck, hard-hearted. All of these are words that we use for sin. But the bottom line is, is sin. Sin is a great separator. For it stands between God and man. Satan sinned and got kicked out of heaven. Man sinned, got kicked out of the garden. We sinned. And if we're not careful... We'll get kicked out. We got to learn to deal with our sin. The reality is that, as it says in Romans, all have sin. And not to change a dot or two, but all will sin. Amen. And the question is, why do we as Christians continue to see. That's a question that we need to really look at. We know better. We understand the consequences of it. But yet every one of us in here Continue to have problems with sin. The Bible says that all unrighteousness is sin. When we try to define sin, we can define it like this. Anything that's not of God is sin. So when we look at our lives, when we examine ourselves, how many things do we participate in that's not of God? Every one of those things is sin. Amen. The Bible talks about what our eyes see and what our flesh wants and all of these things. I've seen. 
The problem is that when Adam sinned in the garden, he put in every one of us a nature of sin. We don't have to go to sin school. You don't, don't have to be taught. You don't, you don't have to be instructed on sinning. It comes automatically. We are just born sinners. And when we are saved, God doesn't take that nature out of us. But he put in us a greater power. And the problem is, we don't allow that greater power to have control. Why, why do we continue in sin? Well, because we used to sin. Amen. Because it's good to us. Amen. Y'all see, y'all didn't say amen. Don't play with me this morning. Look here. Let me, let me say it again. The reason we sin is because it's good to us. Amen. Amen. You don't keep doing stuff that hurts you, but you keep doing stuff that feels good to you. Now, not to get into any specifics, But you know how it feels. It's good to you. Amen. Y'all trying to be quiet. Act like it ain't you, but it's you. Yeah. Keep looking this way. Keep looking this way. It's you. You ain't got to look to the right, to the left. It's, it's you. Some, Sometimes our sin is because we don't trust God. We don't think God going to do what he says he going to do. So we do. The other one is we don't, we don't realize what's in us. We'll holler, great is he that's in us. The he that's in the word. But yet we don't allow that greater to have control. Amen. And sometimes we sin just because we want to. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Why did you do that? Because I wanted to. Ain't nobody made you. You just want to. So sin is anything that is not of God. No matter how righteous you think you are. No matter how many times you read your Bible through. No matter how much time you spend on your knees. You will and you are going to sin. Amen. So we need to look at that. Why do Christians continue to sin? I go to church, and I know what sin is. I can remember when I lived a life that was nothing but sin. Wasn't no righteousness in me at all. I, I was just out there. Yeah. But I gave my life to Christ. I was forgiven for all my sins. Yet I probably committed more sins since I was saved. than I did before I was saved. What 
What is wrong with me? I do something. And then I think about what I've done. Then I ask myself, what did I do? And sometimes it gets to the point where I'm just ashamed to ask the Lord to forgive me. Because I didn't ask him so many times before. So I just hate to get on my knees and say, Lord, I did it again. I said I wasn't going to do it. And Lord, it didn't slip up on me. I just did it. And I wonder, I say now, what's wrong with me? Sometimes it even has me questioning my own salvation. <laughs> Have you ever just wondered, am I really saved? If I'm saved, what I'm doing this for? Why did I go over there if I'm saved? Why did I say that if I'm saved? Why? 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 Lord, have mercy, I'm saved. What is the problem? Three things they say about sin, and it's not mine, but I got this from somewhere else. It says sin will always take you further than you want it to go. And that's true. Sin will always keep you longer than you want it to stay. And sin will always cause you more than you intended to pay. Sin is a problem. So to answer the question, I I went to where questions I answered. And that's in the Bible. Last week we touched on it just a minute when we were talking about baptism. For in Romans chapter 5, and I didn't get it to D to put up, but he quick enough, he can get up there. Romans chapter 5, and and if we look at uh, the next to last verse in Romans chapter 5, amen, where it tells us that where sin abound, yeah. grace did much more uh -huh. abound. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Go to verse 21 now. That, it, that as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now go to 6 and 1. Amen. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abide? And I think some of us got that messed up. Because, because we continue in sin. Some of us so Stupid, we'll say this. I know it's wrong, but God will forgive me. You, you ever said that? I mean, you might not have said that loud, but you thought it in your mind. You know, you hear folks say, I'm going to lay my religion down. And I'm going to do this. You might be surprised you go back to pick it up and it's gone. But Now, now, and I go to verse 2, and then I'm going to get to of my text. God forbid. And this is the problem right here. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than he? The problem must be we not dead to sin. Because we're still living a life with sin. 
So now I want to get to where I get, where I've already given you the Romans 7 and start at verse 14. And I want y'all to just follow with me. And hopefully we can make some sense out of this right. sin problem. For we know that the Lord is spiritual, but I, all of us in here, I, you can put your name there. I put here, but Wendell, I'm calm. Calm means that we have that sin nature that is still trying to rule our life. Amen. And I don't care who you are, how good you are, how long you've been saved. You have that carnal nature in you. The carnal nature of that thing, what? You know, you might say it out loud, the first thought is to cuss them out. <laughs> that, that, that calm nature is, oh, some folks try to be cute with I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> that calm of nature. <laughs> is that nature where you say, I ain't, I'm not going to help them anymore. <laughs> Soul under sin. Yeah. Keep going. 15. And this is the problem. For that which I do, I allow not. But what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Now, 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 we don't really hate it till after we done done. We, we don't hate it while we're doing it. But after we do it, then we hate. Him. And this is Apostle Paul talking. Now, Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, Paul, who probably had more people converted under his preaching than anybody other than Jesus. This is Paul talking. And if anybody shouldn't have a sin problem, you would think it would be Paul. But it gives me Strength to know that if Paul had a problem, yes, then I see why I got a problem. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, don't y'all be looking just at me when, right. when I say I, I'm talking I. <laughs> yeah, I. If I had time, I'd call everybody's name in here, but I. Look it up here at me now. <laughs> Paul says, that which I do, I allow not. Uh -huh. yeah. What he's saying is, I know right from wrong. Come on, right. Come on, and, and that's the thing with everybody in here. Yes. We know right yes. from wrong. Yes. And we know the right thing uh -huh. to do. But the problem is, we don't do the right thing. That's why he says, I hate that, do I? Paul said, what I hate, that's what I end up doing. And, and like I said, we don't hate it until after it's done. When we look back at it, then we say, well, I hate I did that. But it's too late then because we're already done. Paul now, yeah. the great apostle Paul. Go to 16. He said, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. And every one of us in here, and it, 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 it's early, it, the clock say 12, it's a little slow there though, but <laughs> half the day is gone and all of us has already done some things oh, yeah. that we would not. Amen. You've you done some things that you didn't want to do. But you did them. Why did you do them? Because you wanted to do them when you did them, but after you did them, you didn't want to do them. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all look sad at it. Somebody in the church, this mom. 
Keep looking this way, cause you don't want to look guilty. You don't look at them now. Don't don't look at them now. Keep your eyes focused up here. Amen. But sin is real. And it's a real fight every day. And if we are honest, we lose that fight more than we win. Amen. And, and, and really, you can't fix the problem until you admit you got a problem. And, and some of us got some problems with some things. Hey, man, I, I ain't gonna make a list because you got your own list. If I make a list, you go out telling folks I did that. No. <laughs> Verse 17 says, Now there is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. In, in John's writing, in his three little short epistles, John said that the seed that's in us yeah. cannot see. Mm. Paul here said, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Yeah. Alongside that Holy Spirit that's in me, yeah. there's somebody else in me. Yeah. You see, I, I got, and, and, and I, I'm going to say half a half, but that really ain't the way it go, but I got half a window and half a God. Now, the God half is more powerful, but the window half is in control. And you did put your name in there. And so, for the God had to do something, the Wendell had had to give him permission. And a lot of time, that Wendell had won't give the God had permission to do what he do. See, if I just turn it over to God, he'll work it out. But a lot of times, a lot of times, uh, I want to work it out. Yeah. I think I got sense enough to handle things. But what really handling thing is that sin that dwelleth in me. I want to share something with you all. I think I shared before here. But when we look at folks who do terrible, wicked things, uh, 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 a murderer that killed 30 folks, somebody who raped a child, raped an old person, and we look at them and talk about how bad they are. But that same thing in you. Amen. Yes, the same thing you have in you. Yes, the ability to go get a gun and shoot up 30 folks. Yes, in you right now. Yeah. Don't do it in here now, baby. <laughs> but you have that, that in you. So it's that sin that dwelleth in us. You know, I wonder why God didn't just take that out when he saved me. He didn't just take that out. But he leaves it in there. And that's what Paul is talking about. Look at verse 18. Come on, brother. We got it. We got it. We're going to be through in a minute. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelling no good thing. 
Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. And nothing good in me. So what the Bible is telling me that I'm no good. Amen. And it's telling you, you're no good. Amen. He said, for the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I know what I should do. I should walk away. I should not even get in the car and go there. I should not even buy that. I should not even click on that. That's what I should do. And I know I shouldn't do it. But I can't find a way to not do it. Next verse. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. How many can raise their hand? Don't do it. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But how many can raise their hand and say, that's the dilemma that I find myself. That, 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 that's the dilemma that I find myself. Sometimes when I'm on my way to sin, I'm thinking, don't, 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 don't go there. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, I'm here now. And that's what it is. He said that the evil which I would not, that I do. And brothers and sisters, we got to work on this. We come to church. We act like we're righteous. But our best is but filthy rags. Our best. Filthy rain. Next verse. We're going to get out of here. I am going keep you all day. Now, if I do that, which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. That does not let me off the hook. And that's what I want to make sure. That does not let us off the hook. That I'm going to say, it wasn't me. But it was the sin in me. But where is the sin? It's in me. So if it's in me, that means I did it. And God did not let me off the hook. Just because the sin that dwelleth in me is causing me to do because God has given me the ability not to do it. And whenever I can realize what I have, and realize how to use what I have. Then I'll be able to say, I'm not going to do that. And, and I hope that in the lives of us who've been coming to church, that there are some things in our lives now that we can look back on and say, I used to. But I don't anymore. Now, I know there are plenty of things I can say I used to, and I still do. <laughs> Amen. But, 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 but I hope that, that, that we have the victory over something in our life. And we ought to thank God for the victory. And that's why you don't need to look at somebody else who's struggling with something and look down on them. Because they hadn't overcome what you might have overcome. And, and we as Christians are so judgmental of other folk. And we got problems of our own. Sin. Sin. We're going to wrestle with sin 
until we die. Amen. Next verse. I, we can. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now, now I want you to notice the text never says evil makes me do something. What evil does is give me an alternative. That, that's what evil does, see? I, I want to do good, but evil will say, why don't you do this? It's present. And, 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 and for those of you, if, if, if whenever you desire to do good and, and evil is not present, something's wrong with you because... <laughs> and I want you to know that the reverse of that works also. When I would do evil... Good is present with me. It's always something telling me, Colin, mm -mm. do you really want to do that? And I look at it and say, well, this time. Next time I will do it. But it's a hard fight. It's a battle that, that is constant, and Paul is going to tell us about this. He says, go ahead, next verse. For I delight in the law of God after the end with me. And, 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 and it makes me feel good when I do the right thing. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yeah, you know, I, 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 sometimes I, I'm proud of myself. Yes, the idea the right thing. Now, you, ought to be, you ought to be proud of yourself when, when you do the right thing. You ought to feel good about it. That's what Paul said. I delight. I'm glad that I did the, the right thing. That end with me. But go on to the next verse. But I see another law in my memory. Warring against the law of my mind. And bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Because what do we sin with? Conceived in the mind, but these hands like to grab stuff, it ought not to grab. These feet like to go places they ought not to go. And other parts like to do things they ought not to do. You can fill in the blanks there. It says that it brings me into captivity. And that's what sin do. It, it captures. And then when we see that after effect, because we let God down, we let ourselves down. And then, like I say, sometimes, I'm ashamed to go to God and ask him for forgiveness. I, I'm ashamed because I done promised him so many times that I wasn't going to do it anymore. We got a couple more verses. Go ahead. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death. And I told y'all before that back in that time, if you, uh, one of the ways they punished the person was if they killed somebody, they would take that dead body and tie it to them. And they'd have to walk around with that dead, decaying body on them until finally it would infect their body and they would die. Yeah. And that's what Paul is referring to here. That we got a body yeah. that's dying and decaying yeah. and that's killing us yeah. because of the fact that we still succumb to sin. Yeah. Last verse, and we'll be out in a few minutes. 
I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Paul is saying this, that hard as I try, I still have a sin problem. As hard as I maneuver, sin is always in my life. You're going to get the notes. You know I give them. Now, I go through a lot of trouble to fix this. Y'all better not be using this stuff. Right. But he thanked God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I want to end up this sermon. And we got a lot of verses we're going to look at real quick. D got them put up. But what does God do without being a sin? That's what I want to ask. Because... We know we can't go to heaven with sin. So I can't deal with my sin. You can't deal with your sin. So what does God do with our many sin? Amen. And that's what we're going to look at. And then I'm going to roll away. <laughs> Amen. That's what we're going to look at. What does God do with our sin? First thing I want to look at is he covers them. Psalm 85 and 2. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou has covered all their sin. He covers our sin. Psalm 103 and 10. He not dealt with our sin. He not rewarded us according to it. He has not dealt with us after our sin. Not rewarded us according to our iniquity. Now see y'all, somebody ought to be shouting. Amen. Psalm 103 and 12, he removed them. For as far as the east is from the west, so we have removed our transgressions from us. Job 14, 17. He sealed them in a bag and sold them up. My transgressions is sealed up in a bag, and I have sold up my iniquity. Micah 7 and 19. Depths of the sea. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquity. Thou will cast all their sin into the depths of the sea. Isaiah 38 and 17. Put him behind his back. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. That I had in love to my soul, delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sin behind thy back. Jeremiah 50 and 20. He pardoned in those days. In that time, said the Lord, the nigger of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found. For I will pardon them whom I reserve. Hebrew 10 and 17. He forgot them. For their sin and iniquity will I remember no more. Colossians 2 and 14. He nailed them to the cross. Writing out the handwriting of us that was against us. Who were contrary to us. And took it out of the way. Nailing it to the cross. 1 John 1 and 7. Washed it in the blood. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ is son cleanses us from all sin. And Hebrews 1 and 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and his fresh image of his presence, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself 
Praise our Savior. And sit down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So God deals with our sin. Yeah, you hear me? Nail them to the cross. And when he got up with that power, our sins were, are, ill, am forgiven. But brothers and sisters, we got to confess our fault. And we got to repent. And we got to turn. And listen, if you think you are without sin, the Bible says you're a liar and the truth not in you. If I go back to our key, all have sin. All are sinning. All will sin and come short of the glory of God. But thanks be to God that blood that was shed on cavity washes up white as snow. So when God look at me, he don't see my sin, but he sees that I'm covered by the blood. Amen. text says, since God has dealt with all of our sins, just in the next chapter, Romans chapter 8 says, therefore, there is no condemnation towards us in Christ Jesus. We have been set free by the blood of the Lamb. If there will be one here today that says, I have not made the confession, would you come here now? If God has not dealt with your sins, you cannot confess to believe in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Would you come here today? Would there be one here today? The doors of the church is open.
Most gracious and everlasting Father, keeper of us when we can't keep ourselves, provider when we need it most, and protector of our soul. We speak to you, Lord, knowing that this won't be always. Your kingdom is coming. And we look forward to walking the streets of gold. Life may be what it is, but I know you want so much better for us. Your people are standing here right now, Lord. You said where there are two or three gathered in your name. I feel you right now, Lord. I know that you're here. I understand you know each and every one of us by name. You know what we're going through. You know what we really need. We want to say thank you for your provision. We got some things ahead of us, God. I know you've already prepared the way. We pray together, Father, for forgiveness of our sins. I know that you understand. But you won't leave us where we are. You have the power and the glory in our life we want to say thank you we're getting ready to leave this place your church is going to walk out the door but our hearts and our minds are with you for we can do nothing without you Father strengthen us where we're weak give us more 
where we're strong. Protect our families. Even if they don't want it, Lord, reach out and touch them. In the name of Jesus. I'm so glad you didn't forget us. We give you the power and the glory. Lord, I thank you that this won't be the last time that we can reach out and talk to you because you love to hear from us. Bless our pastor. Bless the first lady. Bless this church, Lord, in all that we do for your glory. Protect each and every one as they leave this place. You're worthy, Father. You are so worthy. So now, Father, I speak in the name of Jesus that the power and the glory be a part of each and every life. And the children of God said, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen.